Uh, hello everyone, I'm Pan Xu from UCLA, and I'm glad to um, present our work on improved convergence analysis of stochastic variance reduced policy gradient. This is joint work with Felicia and Chen Chen. Let's start with the review of the policy gradient methods. We denote that uh, we have a Markov decision process, M, which has the state and action space, um, probability transition probability matrix, reward function, discount factor, and the initial um, distribution. Um, a stochastic process is uh, a policy is defined to be a probability function over the action space uh, when the state is given. And the, we assume that the policy is parameterized by a unknown parameter theta. And our goal is to find the parameter theta that can maximize the performance function, um, which is defined as the expected cumulative reward along a trajectory. Um, so we need to calculate the gradient in the gradient policy gradient method, and, and the gradient of the policy is derived as follows. And uh, since the policy is changing over time, so at each iteration, we need to, we need to uh, sample a batch of trajectories to approximate the um, policy gradient. Policy, um, gradient. So we use a stochastic gradient, and uh, then we can run Mm, gradient ascent based on this gradient uh, um, approximation. So here, we, we, um, for the simplicity of the notation, we just denote the gradient of the performance function over one trajectory as a G function. And then we can update the policy parameter um, by the following gradient ascent algorithm. And depending on the specific form of the function G, this can recover the well-known reinforce or GPO MDP algorithm. Since the performance function is non-concave, gradient ascent is guaranteed to converge to a stationary point of the performance function. And in particular, we define an epsilon approximate stationary point theta uh, as a point that um, ensures the squared gradient norm to be upper bounded by epsilon. By standard analysis, uh, similar as the SGD, we can show that the convergence rate of the policy gradient uh, is dominated by two terms. Here, k is the total iteration of the algorithm, and n is the sample size at each iteration. We need to, we need to sample them. So in order to ensure the gradient, the squared gradient norm to be upper bounded by epsilon, then um, we can, we need to run the algorithm for k e equal to one over epsilon iterations. And uh, we also need to sample n equal to one over epsilon um, trajectories at each iteration. So the total, the total number of iterations of this algorithm is k times n, and which is one over epsilon square. And we noted that here the the second term in the convergence result is uh, comes from the variance due to the stochastic gradient approximate. So in order to reduce the total sample complexity, then we can uh, construct a new estimator that can reduce this variance. In particular, the stochastic variance reduced policy gradient uh, is an algorithm that consists multiple epochs. Within each epoch, we just run gradient ascent. And, uh, but the gradient VT here uh, is, has two additional terms compared to the um, reinforced algorithm. And, both terms are calculated from the data um, from the data sampled from the policy theta ms, which is uh, the policy at the beginning of this epoch. And uh, the difference between these two terms serve as a 
some control variant to reduce the total variance of this VT, this, this stochastic gradient. And, uh, but uh, for the second uh, term, there is an issue that uh, the, the G function actually is defined by the policy theta ms, which is the policy in the beginning of this epoch. But it is evaluated at tau j, which tau j is the, from the B trajectory is sampled from the current policy. So in this way, the estimator V is not an unbiased estimator. To address this uh, issue, we can just uh, um, add an importance weight to this term. Uh, here, omega is just the importance weight from the policy of the current, the current policy and to the reference policy we, def we uh, maintained in the beginning of this epoch. In this way, it is easy to verify that uh, this term is also unbiased. So um, the convergence of this SVRPG algorithm um, is shown as follows. And uh, compared with the result from the reinforced algorithm I just showed before, um, you can see that there is an additional term that is in the order of one over B. Here, B is the sample size that we need to, how many trajectories we need in each iteration in the um, inner loop of the algorithm. And uh, n is the sample size of in the outer loop of the algorithm. And s is the total number of the total number of epochs and m is the length of the, each epoch. So in order to ensure that this um, squared gradient norm is upper bounded by epsilon, we need to we need to ensure that the total iteration is um, one over epsilon, and the, the samples, both the sample size from the outer loop and the inner loop to be in the order of one over epsilon. So this gives the result of the total sample complexity of this aggregation, which is also one over epsilon square. So this is um, kind of surprising because why, it, why we have a control variable, but uh, this, this still has the same sample complexity of the reinforced algorithm. And actually this uh, comes from the additional term which is due to the importance weight and uh, the, the additional term actually is the variance from the inner, the approximation in the inner loop. So let's take a closer look at this importance weight. It is easy to verify that the expectation of the um, importance weight is one, and the second order moment is just the rainy divergence between the target policy in the current state and the um, and and the behavior policy, which is the data sampled from the reference policy in the outer loop of the aggression. So in this way, the variance of the uh, importance weight is uh, calculated as this. And if we use mean value theory and uh, to expand the divergence, then and after some um, calculation, we can show that the variance of this importance weight can be upper bounded by the distance between the target policy and the behavior policy. And this result is important because that um, this variance will, this variance bound will decrease uh, to very small when the policy, the behavior policy and the target policy are close enough. And this is exactly what will happen when the algorithm converges. So based on the, based on the, the this argument, uh, and uh, we can remove the additional dependency of the mini batch size b, which is, and uh, in this way we can prove that the convergence of the SVRPG is like this. So um, in this way we have, we can free our choice of the inner um, batch size of the algorithm. That means we can choose a smaller smaller batch size in uh, each in each iteration within the epoch. And then the, 
this will reduce the total sample complexity. For example, here we can choose um, the batch size B equal to one over epsilon to the power of two divided by three. And uh, the hypervalence is to one over epsilon to the power of one third. In, and the total sample complexity is the um, the amount of trajectories we sample in the uh, outer loop and in the inner loop, and which it is calculated as one over epsilon to the power of um, five divided by three. And to compare it, the improvement is uh, over uh, epsilon to the power of minus one over three. And uh, in, in this way, we show that SVRPG is probably more sample efficient than the reinforced and the GPO MDP algorithm. So um, we just conduct, conducted some endomical uh, experiments on couple and the mountain car uh, and problems to show that SVRPG outperform reinforced and the GPO MDP, which doesn't have the controlled structure in the algorithm. And uh, according to our analysis, the choice of the mini batch size B um, within each epoch of SVRPG is important to the performance of the algorithm. Therefore, uh, we also conducted the sensitivity study on the parameter um, B. And we found that if the batch size B is too small, then actually the performance is not good because the variance will be very high. But also if the but also if the batch size B in the inner loop is too large, then the performance of the accuracy is also not um, very good because in this way, actually both in the inner loop and the outer loop, you have a very large batch size. That means you, the per iteration complexity of the accuracy is very high and there's, so, Similarly, we also show the results on the sensitivity study on the epoch lens. Um, so similar conclusion can be drawn from the results. Okay, mm, that's all. Thank you.